Hey, everyone. Your designers are here. I'm Anita at Cedar Hill Farmhouse. And I'm Yvonne. It's Joan Gable. And I'm Kelly at My Soulful Home. We've got tips and tricks and decorating advice for you today. So let's get started. Okay, everybody. It's episode 158. Eight. And today we're going to be diving into the history or the herstory of <laughs> Our interior story. design. We have some oh, interesting this women. This so interesting. Yeah. We have some interesting women who really um, started the profession and the concept of interior design here in America. And we wanted to talk to you about them today and because we think it's really interesting and you'll you'll sound so fascinating at your next cocktail party. We, you can toss out a few of these names <laughs> will, and, right. and some of their quotes and whatnot. Just sort of fun to know the backstory. I thought this is fascinating thing. And, you know, the way people use their houses has changed so much over time. I'm really fascinated by history. So I love knowing where all these things came from. Of course, we only have a short period of time. So we're just going to touch on a few of our favorite topics about mm-hmm. this. But yeah, it's it's a it's a fascinating history. Yeah, it really is. And, um, you know, it also underlines the fact of something, you know, that is an, an undercurrent of everything that we talk about here at DTT is, you know, how important having a lovely, comfortable home that's a sanctuary is. Um, so, you know, reaching way back to even the cave people, you know, they were decorating their caves and mm-hmm, and people mm-hmm. throughout all of history. With art on their wall. Exactly. They were doing things to make their homes expressive of themselves, comfortable, inviting, um, maybe before they even really knew what they were doing or why they were doing it. And so we find that, you know, obviously feel that that is so important and we know we do all do too. So Mm -hmm. it's kind of fun to just take a look back. And as Anita said, we're just going to sort of, you know, brush over, touch here and there and, and give you some, um, information about aspects of the history of interior design that we find the most Some tidbits we found interesting. Perfectly said. Yes. You want to kick it off, Miss Anita? Well, I'm starting at medieval times. So do you have something before that? I think that's probably a good place to start. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I think a lot of a lot of um, home decor is also influenced by the Greeks and the Romans, depending on where you are, the um, the Chinese dynasties, um, yes. uh, Egypt. But let's start. It's, we don't want to go that far back, so we'll start. Well, in the but Middle it's Asia. interesting you mentioned that because in the I think it was 1840s they unearthed Pompeii. Yeah, mm-hmm. and so the whole Pompeian style of things they began to see all these intricate mosaics, mm-hmm. tile work from the Pompeian time. And so they started, they kind of did a revival of Pompeian style, and suddenly there were all these new things in the 1840s based on this Pompeian style. In fact, I got a clock recently from around the top part. It's missing. So it's really just a pedestal now, but it has all this intricate hand painting, but it's based on the styles they saw that they unearthed that were from you know, these uh, just biblical times. And really. I really think that styles and, and um, motifs and design repeat themselves over and over again and are refreshed as we um, go through history. Right. Well, one of the points I really want to make about interior design is that long time ago, people didn't have money, as you probably know, and they were just struggling to survive. Mm-hmm. So in medieval times, this is when they had one pot of soup or uh, I'm trying to think what they called it. It wasn't porridge, but there was some name for it. They would have one pot on the stove and every day they would add stuff to it. So you never mm-hmm. threw it out. Mm-hmm. And it's kind of a little, you know, Yucky. A little gross for me to think that some of those <laughs> yes. bits of food in there might be uh, from a month before. Uh-huh. They just kept adding to it every day. Anything that was left over just yeah, stayed the, in. Yeah, the dark ages in medieval times was sort of a slow time for decorators. You know, That's there right. Was it's a, not, it wasn't a big decorating yeah. time. The a lot thing, of people, you know, people weren't like, hey, I'm looking for something Tuscan or farmhouse. Could you come in and help <laughs> no, me? Because, no. because they yeah. were looking for how to feed themselves and protect themselves. Exactly. exactly. So the, when the you're out on a crusade about, or such, you know. The interesting thing about the medieval times is typically they would have one room homes. So you didn't have a bedroom and, well, the kitchen was usually outside of the home because it would make the house hot. So the, you know, and it was an open fire. So the, 
the house tended to be one room and that was, and that's why you didn't have a lot of permanent furniture in there because this is the room that you ate in. This is the room you slept in. So things would be moved out of the way over to the sides during the day, depending on what activity was going on during the day. And people shared bedrooms and Mm -hmm. beds. Mm -hmm. I thought was very interesting. Yeah. So yeah, not, mm -hmm. not a big time for decorating, but (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, and a lot. A, well, I mean, a time for illiteracy. It was. It just was a very, very bad time in yeah. the world history. So let's dial ahead to when it starts to get fun. Okay. Yeah, let's functional and ahead. fabulous, as Yvonne right. would say, not just functional. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, should I talk about Queen Victoria yet? Are we ready? You for can that? do that. If well, you want. I mean, well, that's a big jump because we have the Renaissance, mm-hmm. and yes. we have you know the painters and and mm-hmm. and so influenced in Italy. But remember. That's just not the center of the world because they've had, they've had, um, like the Persians and the Turks and the Chinese all had their own history of, of decorating and that they were vibrant. But, you know, we can talk about sort of Central Europe. Uh, during that time in the Renaissance, the, the, wor- the world actually got warmer. There was more protein for people to eat. And because of that, they actually, um, their brains became bigger. And well, it and wasn't so just surviving. Time, mm-hmm. Right. So during this time, like the uh, Renaissance time, the wealthy began decorating their homes elaborately. But the average person was living in a very sparsely uh, furnished home Mm -hmm. and they were really barely getting by. So they weren't thinking about decorating their homes. Yes, you're right. Go ahead and move ahead to Queen Victoria. Okay. Well, so what I want to do is come now to kind of the fun part of decorating and Victorian stuff. I it, look, it looks dated to us now, except for you, except for Kelly's house, <laughs> mm-hmm. which is a Victorian farmhouse. But during the industrial revolution, things started being mass produced. So think about this made a massive change in society. Now people are employed. Now people have money, some disposable income right. to buy some furniture. And now guess what? Furniture is being mass produced. And so now it's much more affordable because before this time, if you wanted anything made, you had to go to a craftsman who handmade something specifically just for you. Now it's being mass produced. So it's much cheaper. And Queen Victoria, I love Queen Victoria. And the reason it's so fascinating to me because she reigned for so long and she impacted so many things that have gone on in the world and so many styles. Think about uh, Princess Diana, the Kardashians, all Mustly. Madonna, <laughs> all these people rolled into uh, one. Mustly. I mean, she, she was the celebrity back in the day. Oh, yeah, that's true. And so anyway, so she comes into power really about the time of the Industrial Revolution and after, and this is when people are wanting to decorate their homes. They have some money to buy some furniture. And she comes into power and she is wildly popular. She is a style icon, which you don't really think of her as being one, but everyone was copying everything she was doing. Well, look at it this way, Anita. Mm -hmm. that's how we got the white wedding dress. That's what, that's what I was going to say. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. She Mm -hmm. popularized the white wedding dress. She popularized engagement rings, the idea of giving gifts for your birthday or for Christmas or whatever that they popularized that the Christmas tree. Also Albert brought from his beloved Germany Mm -hmm. and that, and that popularized. (laughs) Okay. But every time I watch Victoria, which I absolutely love. mm -hmm. Okay. Does anybody else think that Albert looks so much like Prince? Prince, I know. Yes. Well, the actor does, not the yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes, I think he does. <laughs> He's oh uh, yeah. I like him. He's cute. Yeah. So sorry, this is <laughs> um and the other thing I wanted to talk about, so this is when the style so here's the weird thing is when you think of before this, and that's the thing too, I want to say with style, things ebb and flow and there's mm-hmm. a backlash. Maybe it's, mm-hmm. it's a time of excess and then there's a backlash and then there's a sparseness that comes after that. 
So when you, if you look, if you watch any kind of uh, Jane Austen based movies, you'll see the homes decorated in the early 1800s style mm-hmm. and they look really sparse to our modern eyes to see how right. things were done. Right. The we Victor- call that like the Federalist style, very right. colonial. Mm-hmm. Napoleon, Napoleon's time period. This is where Louis Philippe, you know, style was popular as well. And so things were rather sparse. Well, uh, Victoria loved lavish, lavish things. And she was brought up in the palace. So, of course, she's been around all these fancy, fancy things. So she was really into pattern on pattern and velvets and brocades and all of this. And here's the another thing. So everyone wanted a style like Victoria's, and she loved all these opulent things. But also, this was a time where you could really, you had some money to spend. And the way you showed off your wealth was... Every surface had to be covered. If you had a table, it had to have a throw on it. It couldn't be a plain throw. It had to be a very fancy throw mm-hmm. with velvet and tassels. And fringes, yeah. Yes. Yeah, and zillions of little plates. Every Everything had a little plate. Lots of wallpaper. Yeah. Lots of wallpaper. And then what I was saying is things then shifted the other direction. After the Victorian times, people got probably, I I probably would have been driven nuts with all that clutter. Mm -hmm. And that's when things went, the pendulum swung the other direction and they went into the craftsman style, the Mm -hmm. arts and crafts, Mm -hmm. where they believed in craftsmanship and artisan and art, you know, artisans developing things, but things had straight lines and they were much more cleanly done. And the time of the excess was over at that point. And notice the wood was a lot lighter as well. Yes. We see that we see sort of the blonde wood coming um, on the forefront where, you know, Victorian woods are heavily carved and dark. And I mean, they're beautiful, but it's just like layer upon layer upon layer of that. Mm -hmm. So just about 100 and say 120 years ago, uh, the term interior designer or interior decorator began to be used in America. And um people started to embrace form and function and interpret it through the art of decorating in their homes. And as Anita was saying, people had some more disposable income. And just like it was uh, started with Victoria, people looked to her. Then the industrialists like the Fricks and the Huntingtons and all of these powerful moguls who had lots and lots of money, they were then people that were looked to for styles and influences in the art of decorating. And so two women really sort of bubbled to the surface, or maybe three, we should say, because we can toss in Edith Wharton and then we can have it like another threesome, which is nice. Um, (laughs) these, these These women started to bubble to the surface and they became like real celebrities in their own right as interior decorators. America's so, first interior decorators. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So so we have Dorothy Draper, who mm-hmm. in 1923 established her the first commercial design firm ever, which is still in business today. Wow. Dorothy Draper and Company. Yeah. And they uh, – something like uh, – oh, the, she decorated – hotels. She did the Greenbrier. She's done things, did things at the White House. She was everywhere. And, uh, you know, what an interesting time for a woman to not only have her own company, but really to start a whole industry. And that was also, remember, the time of the suffragette. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so, which yes, makes that very a, interesting. Well, yes. and this is about the time, you know, one of my favorite authors, Edith Wharton, who was uh, born in 1862, and then she died in 1937. She's famous. She's a famous writer. Uh, She wrote The Age of Innocence, for example. But she was really into interior design, which really fascinates me. And she wrote the Manual of Interior Design in 1897. Mm. Yeah, and Anita just told me that before we started today, like 15 minutes ago. And I read... I thought everything that Edith Wharton has ever written, but I didn't know she did that. So mm-hmm. that is so interesting. So in, in the early 1900s, um, we had Dorothy Draper and she was not trained in interior design. There was no school of interior design mm. at that time. Mm-hmm. So she was taking good taste, common sense, and a natural talent to interpret things such as proportion, scale, and color. You know, just mm. like 
We do. And just like you do in your own homes, as you're listening and you're looking through magazines and Pinterest, you, you're just relying on your good taste, your common sense, and your ability to put something together. And this is what Dorothy Draper did. And the other woman that I find so interesting is Elise DeWolf. Yeah. She oh, was yeah. the first woman to actually, she was given a quote unquote commission uh, to design something. Uh, so I guess the commission means she was paid for it. So that, you know, was interesting in and of itself. And in 1913, she then published her first interior design book, The House in Good Taste. Oh, and yes. I'm going to take yes. a look around. And if we can find a link to a copy of that, we'll put that in the mm -hmm. show notes. But um, she is a very interesting woman. She um, was born into a very... Uh, a uh, prominent family in New York, let's just say. And I guess, I don't know if this is true, I, I, whether she said it literally or figuratively, but she said, Macy's is now our front door. So that may have oh. been their family home in New York oh. where Macy's was. And then um, Yvonne, you'll find this interesting. She spent some time in Scotland uh, as a young girl, like you did. And she started out as an actress. And really what she was known for was more of her costume. She had some uh -huh. special arrangement with her directors where she could pick out her own outfits. And I guess she was just so good at putting them together. That's was it was better than her acting. Set design mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. Do you know if I, she did the I didn't read anything about that. But what she did was cleared out, like like you were saying, everything was opulent and overdone and just, you know, doily on top of doily and doily on top of fabric and mixed patterns and all that. She is known for sort of clearing out the clutter, opening up the spaces, using soft, warm colors. And that was her signature look. Huh. And she apparently decorated her home, which was on Irving Place, which is a great little area in New York City. And when people came to visit, they were just like, oh my goodness, like this was such a departure and everyone loved it. And all of a sudden she decided, well, I'm going to become a decorator, you know, better than acting. <laughs> yeah. I'm pretty good at this. And so Elise DeWolf has some really uh, interesting quotes that I like. Um, apparently she wasn't the most attractive gal, but again, you know, the uh, you know beauty is in the eye of the beholder and looks change over the years but i guess she was not known for being particularly uh, stunning so one of her famous quotes is i am going to make everything around me beautiful that will be my life oh. and that, <laughs> but i like that so quote. dramatic i love that quote and she launched herself into uh, the life of an interior designer and the other one which rang through my head while i was uh, renovating our house here is i believe in optimism and plenty of white paint <laughs> oh, she would fit right in with a yeah, lot of exactly. today's designers i know i know how about so that? I, I, she's written, I, she, I believe that she wrote a book as well, but it was not as uh, famous as the Dorothy Draper book, The House in Good Taste, which, you know, I think I have not read it, but I think if we did read it today, I'm, I'm venturing to say that it would probably be pretty spot on. Mm -hmm. These two gals seem to, you know, have uh, a, just a natural sense of what was going to work it, throughout the ages, you know, it doesn't matter you know, they're probably giving tips and advice like we would be giving now. It doesn't matter if it's a farmhouse or a Tuscan or, you know, <laughs> <laughs> or or caveman or whatever your mm -hmm. look is. Mm -hmm. Green Chef is a delicious delight any time of year, but especially during the holidays. What a wonderful vision to behold at the Green Chef boxes on your doorstep. Green Chef is the number one meal kit for eating well. And it makes eating well so easy with plans to fit every lifestyle, whether you're keto, paleo, vegan, vegetarian, gluten-free, or just looking to eat a more balanced diet. So let Green Chef take the work out of eating clean this holiday season. And if you've got guests coming, shop Green Bundles. They're now available at the Green Market. It's your one-stop shop for nutritious grab-and-go breakfasts, including vegan options, brunch kits, wholesome lunches, ready-to-eat snacks, veggie sides, and more. You can feel your best this December and do your best with Green Chef because they offset 100% of the delivery emissions as well as 100% of the plastic in every box. Go to greenchef.com slash 60DTT and use the code 60DTT and get 60% off 
plus 20% off your next two months. Greenchef.com slash 60 DTT and use the code 6060DTT to get 60% off plus 20% off your next two months. Inevitably, with the new year come wellness goals. One very effective and easy to reach goal is to add dose to your wellness regime. Dose is expertly formulated organic wellness shots that support your liver in one delicious drink. Formulated with ingredients clinically shown to support liver health potent turmeric, milk thistle, and ginger. There's zero sugar and zero calories. Did you know that your liver performs over 500 special functions? Since I learned all that my liver is doing, I started with Dose to support all those vital functions. I take a shot of refreshing Dose two times per week to combat everyday toxins from food, meds, alcohol, and unhealthy air. Since starting with Dose about a month ago, I am definitely feeling an overall improvement in my health. So if you want to give Dose a shot and invest in your health like I have, Dose is offering DTT listeners 15% off your first order, plus an additional 15% off if you subscribe for a monthly delivery. That's 30% off your first order. So go to dosedaily.com co slash DTT and use the code DTT. That's dosedaily.co dot co slash DTT and use the code DTT. If, if you have a good taste, common sense, and then you develop a talent to put it all together, it can work in any decor in any age. Well, and I think most of this last century in America, design has been pretty typically American and English, most, most designs. So um, I think that's really the basis for a lot of the design over the previous decades. You don't think French? I think it's, well, I don't think it's impacted the masses like it does now, but I, I, you know, Jackie Kennedy is the one that really brought French had that French style and, and kind I, of pop- yeah, Sister Parish actually um, designed the White House for them. Mm-hmm. Well, the White House mm-hmm. is very, yeah, American, mm-hmm. obviously, mm-hmm. which it needs to be. Well, there was a lot of French influence in it, actually. Well, she, yeah, right. No, she had some fresh, French influences for sure, but I don't know that I, you really think there's been a lot of French influence on design in the US? Um, Previous to maybe the last 30, 40 years? Uh, Probably not in the last 30, 40 years, but definitely. Previous to that, I'm saying. Uh, No, probably, you're right. Probably more English than anything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But definitely, French style has made a a reappearance. And during the time of um, Queen Victoria, Napoleon, and, and further back, French style influenced all of Europe. The courts of Europe, Russia, you know, everything. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So we see it again. It's just like uh, a do-over, you know, like I'm thinking of the Grecian key motif. You know, that's so big right now. Well, and styles, obviously, uh, before it took a while from one style to spread to another area. And now it's just kind of instantaneous. And I know even with fashion, you don't even have to wait for the next fall fashion cycle. I mean, uh, there's new designs coming out every month, every Mm -hmm. week now, whereas it used to be once a year release or twice a year. And, you know, with the internet, I mean, everything's just changes so much faster now. Yeah. Almost like you want to say, stop the madness. Let Mm -hmm. me just enjoy this stuff for a while. It seems I am. I, it is. And I can see how it's annoying to people and it's annoying to me. I mean, you get the rose gold. Now everything's rose gold and then rose gold. And, and then a year later, Rose gold, it's out, it's out. Get rid of it, get rid of it. Mm-hmm. Like, Weren't you just telling me to get it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And by the time it trickles down where a lot of people are getting it, the, it's out the, already. the forerunners yeah. are off mm-hmm. on something else. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But it is, I, I think it's such an industry, interesting industry in and of itself. I, I love the idea that, you know, it's pretty much started by women, you know, mm-hmm. to make actually making interior decorating or interior design a profession and and how far it has come in such a short period of time, you know, relatively short period of time in the history of the world, 120 years, that's pretty quick, right? And now we have, we go from like these few gals, uh, you know, 
sort of tripping on their profession in a sense, right? They they just did something, someone liked it and reacted to it. And then, you know, they were smart and saying, well, that's what, well, I guess I'll just do that for a living now. Let me go get some <laughs> business cards made up or something, you know? <laughs> and then, and, and you know, now a dial head, only a hundred and some odd years and you've got DIY network and you've got HGTV and you've got all, you know, all the blogs and you've got all the shelter magazines and you've got decorating tips and tricks, the podcast, (laughs) all this kind of stuff here. You know, it's, I think it's a, it's a wonderful time to enjoy design because it's so accessible now. And Kelly, you don't have to have a degree or those letters behind your name. So many people now can be fabulous home decorators themselves because of the volumes of information that they can get. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Exactly. I mean, think you about can educate yourself. Yeah. And don't you think this design now is influenced by TV shows too? Oh, sure. Or, you know, movies, people like that, you know, they want a certain look like that they've seen in a movie or something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, but even think about I think the, like the first house that I really did. And I remember wanting to get certain fabrics or certain hardware and it was to the trade only. You know, uh, you know yes. anything uh, that was I, kind of, uh, you know, not just off different. the rack. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you mm-hmm. had to, you know, and so the world is not like that anymore, whether oh, it be no. fabric or wallpaper or, or fi- any kind of fixtures. I mean, you can get pretty much anything from anywhere on the internet. So we're really sitting in a really great spot in the history of interior design. Yeah. And if, yeah. You're, if you're feeling like, you know, we we like to impart to you um, information, tips, advice, knowledge to give you more confidence in your home decorating. And now, you know, you look back to the, some of these women that we've been talking about today and, you know, they just went for it. They, they they had an inkling that they liked this sort of thing and that they were good at it and it was going to make themselves happy and their clients happy. And they just went for it. They, but look, they came out of that art world too, mm-hmm. which amazes me. A lot of people like fashion, art, culinary skills, it's almost like they're all rolled into one. It's that very creative aesthetic. Mm-hmm. And we can see that people offshoot from that. You know, okay, I I spent my time in like Carolyn... Carolyn um, Rome, she she modeled for um, uh, Ralph Lauren yeah, and designed right. with him. And she just took her knowledge of fashion and put it into flowers and home interiors. It's just amazing. Oh, I, do, I love her books. They're so mm-hmm. beautiful. Mm-hmm. She really has a great style. So we, we're hoping that you enjoyed today. If anybody has any other... Uh, you know, information about the history of interior design that they want to share with us or give us some point points uh, of direction on other people that you'd like to hear about, maybe specific designers. You know, we've mentioned like Sister Parish and a few others. They might be just interesting to dive into a few of those people, mm-hmm. you know, right. in an I episode. Mean, we just kind of picked out a few pieces of interesting information that we had. This was, topic was so broad. It was kind of hard to even but go it's just so very interesting. deep on anything. That's exactly right. right. But like I, Anita, I, I know yeah. you love Charles Fadre. Yes. I mean, uh, you know, he's since passed recently. Right. But I know that he's influenced your love of French design and detail. Um, Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. I mean, there's so many designers that we could talk about. And I really kind of focused on the way back history and not the recent history. But there's so much that we could talk about in different styles, how they've who has brought them over, how they did it. And it's it's so interesting to me to to learn about the evolution of it. Mm, yeah, because it, it, it is not just fluff, you know. It, it, it is really not just fluff. That's no. right. So, you know, what you're doing and what we're, we talk about and what we're doing on the blogs and, and you guys are enjoying the, the podcast, it's important. And it's, it's so inter- interesting how you can sort of pinpoint the points in history where things change, like Anita brought to our attention today, you know, where there was this shift and all of a sudden people had some disposable income and that's how things changed well, and, and look like what about, they did with the money. They well, wanted about, to make their homes beautiful. Right. I mean, with the early 1900s, that's when really after the Edwardian time, really around the 20s, I think, mm-hmm. is about the time ready to wear came into play because before mm-hmm. that, 
just like we talked about pre-industrial revolution, you had to have something custom made. There were no mass produced pieces of furniture. The same thing with women's clothing. You had everything custom made just for you. And about that time, that's when they started introducing this ready to wear where you could go to a shop and pick out something in your size and buy it. Right. So it was accessible to everyone. And Mm -hmm. and I think, you know, now interior design, interior decorating, I mean, goodness, with online, with Target, with all of these things, good design is accessible to everybody. And it's, it's a great time to be interested in this type of thing. Mm -hmm. You're right. You said something that's spot on. Good design is accessible to everyone. Mm -hmm. Well, and I think, oh, go ahead. And and of all the history of the world, that's never been true like it is now. The other thing I wanted to add to that is really as just like with fashion, it used to be that there were one or two styles with fashion or with interior decorating. And you really didn't have a lot of choices of what was in style or on trend. And now it really is kind of an anything goes. You can wear a short skirt, a long skirt, a mid skirt. Uh, You can go with a lot of color in your house, a little bit of color. And it's all works and it's all in style somehow all at the same time. Mm -hmm. I love that. Pesto pork chops over Parmesan polenta. Not that easy to say, but oh, so easy to make with Green Chef. Green Chef is the number one meal kit company for eating well, and we have such a great deal for you. You're going to save $250. Listen on for the details on that. Green Chef makes eating well easy for any lifestyle, whether you're keto, paleo, vegan, vegetarian, gluten-free, or just looking to eat more balanced meals. You know, we're getting into the busy holiday season, so it's a perfect time to have Green Chef help you out. Let Green Chef take the work out of eating clean this holiday season with their chef-crafted, nutritionist-approved recipes featuring fresh ingredients and nothing artificial. And you know what? You don't have to lose track of your healthy eating habits during the holidays. Every Green Chef customer gets a free, that's right, a free session with their registered dietitians who will walk you through how to make clean eating work for you. So sign up for your free session and start on the road towards better health today. And the deal I want to tell you about, visit greenchef.com slash DTT250 and use the code DTT250 for $250 off your order. So that's greenchef.com slash DTT250 and use the code DTT250 for $250 off your order. Go ahead, clean out your closet, then head straight to Quinn's. I love every item Quince offers from wardrobe to decor, and I can really recommend their Ultra Stretch Super Wide Leg Pant at $49.90. The price is unbeatable, and the look is so flattering. It keeps you in on top and flares out of the bottom. Everything feels right with Quince. The price, the quality, and the sustainability. Quince offers a range of luxury wardrobe and home goods at prices within reach. And like Quince's clothing, their home goods are priced 50 to 80% less than similar brands. Quince only works with factories that use safe, ethical, and responsible manufacturing practices, along with premium fabrics and finishes. Once you've cleaned out your closet and refreshed with Quince, you can also add something to your home decor. So give your wardrobe and your home the refresh it needs with Quince. Go to quince.com slash DTT to get free shipping and 365-day returns on your next order. That's quince, Q-U-I-N-C-E dot com slash DTT for free shipping and 365-day returns. Quince.com slash DTT. And let me know how you love those pants. Mm-hmm. And, I do and too. really, you can be so creative and make your home a reflection of you. And, you know, this is why we do what we do. This is why we're here Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, bringing you new information because we want you to create a beautiful home that looks like you, that feels like you, that yeah. you're enjoying. And also, we want to educate and entertain so that you have a little bit of knowledge, a little base of knowledge when you start decorating. And, we're, That pleases me so much when I get an email or a comment saying, oh, I never thought about that before. But now that you said that, I've been using this technique and I love it. And that's just music to our ears. Yeah. So if there's any particular topics you want us to cover, and like we said, it it could be a decorating 
con in some sort of decorating thing, but also even something historical if you're interested about or different or different kind of styles, what makes this style different from that one. I mean, we love doing the research and finding out, uh, you know, just some fascinating new information. Yeah. And we've been doing all of this for almost one year. <laughs> <laughs> so We've been doing this we for almost are a year. thrilled uh, to be celebrating our year anniversary on the next episode. Mm-hmm. So don't miss out on that. And if you sent us a question via email or voicemail, we may be talking about you or answering your question on uh, the on next, the next episode. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, and All if right. yours doesn't get covered next time it will get covered the next time because we do read your questions we uh listener questions Mm -hmm. and that's how we're going to celebrate our one year anniversary with you all (laughs) so remember everyone we're here to inspire you to create a beautiful home until next time hey everybody we want to thank you so much for listening to decorating tips and tricks And we want to make it even easier for you to listen. And it's easier if you subscribe. You just click the subscribe button on our website, www.decoratingtipsandtricks.com. Or you can subscribe through Apple Podcasts or any of your favorite podcast listeners. When you subscribe, DTT comes free right to you three days a week. So until next time.